What is up y'all, welcome back. It is time for a fresh top shelf video. This is essentially my way of sharing with you what happens when I clean up this beauty room area and I find myself holding on to something that I don't wanna put away because I don't have object permanence and I don't wanna forget that it exists because I like it so much and I wanna keep using it. And so my top shelf is like the stuff that I'm using either on an everyday basis, at least on a weekly basis because it doesn't all fit on one face of makeup. And this is my way of not just including things that are like new, that are my favorites or whatever, but showing y'all like what I'm using all the time no matter when it came out. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and jump in. I also align these with the seasons and we're right in the beginning of summer. It just seems to be how it turns out. You know, that's how it kind of shakes out because my makeup does tend to have a more noticeable change as the, the, as the weather also changes. I'm also drinking a smoothie, so I've got a little bit of like a frozen mouth going on. Okay, I wanna talk first about like skincare and sun care and that will get those out of the way because if I don't, I will forget. The first thing, I actually shared this on my Instagram stories today, but this is a really important distinction. This is a product I've been using for a while now and I've worked my way through more than half of it and I really, really like it, but there's a catch. So this is the SkinCeuticals Silly Marin. Silly Marin, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. It sounds a, it's a funny word to say. Silly Marin CF Salicylic Acid Acne Treatment, high potency combination antioxidant with 0.5% Silly Marin, 15% L-ascorbic acid and 0.5% ferulic acid. It is for your anti-aging and also your anti-adult acne acne, right? The salicylic acid and everything really helps. I've been fighting acne for a long time. It's gotten worse lately because of stress. This was really helpful and it was, this is a very important detail. It was sent to me by SkinCeuticals in like one gifting round that they did. I'm not like on a PR. I might be on a PR list, but they just don't send stuff out that often. Like I'm still paying $150 a jar for the triple lipid restore 242. Like I'm not, I'm not in their good graces that much. So yeah, I got, you know, enough of the way through this that I was like, all right, I should probably think about repurchasing it because I like having it in my routine. $182. And like the thought process that I went through for a minute where I was like, have I come to this echelon in my life where I'm paying $182 for like a routine repurchase of a skincare product? I just don't think so. Like I'm looking at myself like hard, look at myself in the mirror, you know, I'm like, $182, $182. I don't think that I'm that person yet. I don't think I'm there yet. And recently I got this in the mail and I had decided to try it because I was like, in my mind, they lived in the same place. They're very, very similar ingredients. So this is a brand I had not heard of until they reached out to me on Shop My Shelf and they are called Dermalect. This is the Self Esteem Beauty Sleep Serum, glycolic, salicylic, and L-ascorbic acids. So I'm a glycolic girly. That's what's really, really helped with clearing my skin and salicylic, and they work beautifully together. You know, they're just a happy little duo. And this doesn't have, I don't think, any glycolic in it, but there's also glycolic in the rest of my routine, so I figured that that would be fine. If nothing else, it would make things better. Dog having another random conniption, probably because he realized that the cats exist again. And so I started using this. I started kind of alternating nights and then using it more consistently, and guess what? <laughs> It's fantastic. It does a really, really great job for exactly the part of my routine that I needed it to do for my routine. And it's $42. And this isn't sponsored, but like Shop My Shelf is so awesome because I can actually communicate directly with brands. And I was like, hey, I'm about to post about this on my stories. Can I get a discount code for my viewers? And they were like, yeah, here's 20% off. And I was like, sweet. So yeah, khaki 20, K-A-C-K-I-E 20 gets you 20% off at Dermalect. So like, let's recap, $182, $42 minus 20%, <laughs> whatever that is. So like 42 times 0 0.8, $33.60. That's how much this will be after the discount. I don't know what taxes and shipping and all that stuff is, but like, <laughs> to me, this is the obvious choice. <laughs> And y'all know, I'm not like that person who's like, it's a dupe, it's a dupe. Like, cause I don't think that something has to be a dupe to be good. I just needed it to have similar enough ingredients that it was gonna serve the same purpose in my routine. And I'm not gonna be like throwing in a whole bunch of like random new ingredients into like an acne care routine. I wanted to keep it as like tight as I could. And that has done an amazing job. So I wanted to share that with y'all. A lot of my other skincare has really stayed the same. I'm still using my SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore 242. Never found anything that works as well as that. Still using like all my oils 
and everything like there will be at the end of this video a playlist of all of my other top shelf videos and a lot of them like they apply seasonally it's not like me changing my mind means i hate those old products so it's still worth watching those i have a handful of sunscreens here and honestly i could just this could be an entire sunscreen video if i let it because i just love so many of my sunscreens you know i love them all for different reasons <laughs> but one that I still use constantly and what I have on my face today is the Bloom Effects Tulip Dew Vitamins and Minerals. I do also have 20%. Sometimes it's 20 and sometimes it's 25. I have put the code in and tested it and sometimes it gives me 25% off of certain products. So I'm not really sure, but uh, just code khaki, I think, will get you a discount on Bloom Effects. This is one of the most beautiful sunscreens ever. It gives you this amazing, it's a mineral sunscreen. It's this really lovely serum that gives you this beautiful glow. It looks a lot like sort of a lightly tinted version of the Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion on the skin. Like that's what it looks like. So, you know, if you are not a person who wants a tenacious amount of dew on their skin, don't go for this, but it is just the most beautiful full finish if that's what you're into. It's ridiculous. And wearing it even just alone, it's beautiful. It's very perfecting and, and blurring. And also you get that like very youthful, hydrated look to your skin. This is the newest one to my collection. And it is similar in the sense that it has a pretty similar tint to it. This is the new RMS Supernatural Radiance Serum and it is a, an SPF 30. The other one was an SPF 50. I like this. I like that I can kind of build it as much as I want. Like a lot of times with sunscreens, you feel like you kind of top out. You have to like wait for it to dry and put more on if you really want to get the barrier. Something about this has a really nice grip to it. It is quite opaque also. So like you kind of feel like you, I don't know, it's like the feel good factor of getting a physical barrier on your skin with a mineral sunscreen. So as you rub this in, I mean, it's beautiful. It's blurring. It has like an ingredient smell to it that's kind of nice, kind of herbal. But also, I love it. <laughs> Every time I use it, I like it more. I was asking my esthetician, this is such a random story, but I was asking my esthetician if I can sleep in sunscreen because I usually shower before I go pick up my kid from school. And when I pick him up, you know, I'm getting sun exposure and stuff like that. Like I'm up for more of the day. And I don't wanna go without sunscreen, but I also don't wanna like redo my entire skincare routine before bed. And she's like, well, as long as you find a, a sunscreen that your skin doesn't mind, then sleeping in it is fine. You know, it's just extra like titanium dioxide or zinc oxide or whatever. And I slept in this and my skin loves it. I don't know if that's advisable, but like, I just kind of use myself as a guinea pig. And like, every time I wear this when I'm sleeping, like, I'm like, this is skincare. Like my skin looks great. It's like way happier <laughs> when I like worn this to sleep in, which is stupid. I admit that that's dumb. Like you don't need to sleep in a sunscreen, but like if you happen to sleep in this sunscreen, I don't know. It seems to be doing nice things. <laughs> Round the clock. Then the third one that I've been using is this, and it's been getting a ton of attention online. This is the new Naturium UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50, and this one is a chemical sunscreen. It's avobenzone, homosalate, and octosalate. It's so awesomely lightweight, and obviously, like, we don't talk about white casts or anything like that with chemical sunscreens because that's just not what they do. You know, like, you can make a clear chemical sunscreen. That's why we have chemical sunscreen. <laughs> It's just a lot more cosmetically elegant, but it's really fantastic under makeup. It's very hydrating and beautiful. It's super, super lightweight and it doesn't smell like banana boat, you know? Like even though I know that there's like fragrance in a lot of those things, there's no fragrance in this, but it also doesn't have the SPF smell. I just really like it. I would say that all of these are specifically for dry skin people. It is tough to find a sunscreen for people who are not dry skinned. <laughs> like so many of them are just really dewy and hydrating and you know, beautiful for me. And that's why I love all the sunscreens that I love. But I will say I still use my Tula Mineral Magic all the time. It is a golden tint, so it's not for the fairest of fair skin tones, but for me and deeper, it works great. And it is not dewy, so I highly recommend that one as well. Complexion, we do have something new here, and this is the Danessa Myricks Beauty Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. Loving it, just loving it. It's really, really excellent. I don't think it's particularly expensive. I'm not a huge, I mean, I like the idea of the packaging, but it all does feel a little bit like it got printed off kilter. Like it feels a little bit like I got it at the flea market. Like it's, it's kind of weird. Like it's kind of like that tart sculpt tape that they did where like the packaging looked like it was 
a stock photo that I didn't pay for the rights to. I, I just think that kind of, I don't know, we lost a little bit of the plot here with, with the actual packaging, but I like the lid. I like the kind of like lucite see-through situation. It's giving like, I don't know, old school sunscreen in a really nostalgic way, but that's neither here nor there, is it? This is a really beautiful formula, and this is the first time that there has been a really nice meeting point between what I need from a complexion product and the type of complexion product that Janessa Myers has decided to make. When she first put out her Vision cover, that really, really tiny bottle of like hyper-concentrated, like makeup artist-oriented pigment, it's like a complexion pigment that you can kind of mix with anything to thin it out, that it gave me a lot of hope because it does have this really fantastic dewiness to it, you know, but it's like wildly high coverage. And so it's like, you needed like a dot of it and then you needed to have something else that was like the carrier for it. And then she did the same thing with the Yummy Skin Serum, like it was like a foundation, you know, and then that Yummy Skin Powder Balm. That stuff is fantastic for oily skin. It's just really, really cool stuff. Like it's a fantastic invention. It's just not for me. And so this is finally where she and I get to like, hang out and agree on something because I do think that Janessa Myricks is an amazing innovator. She's a brand that I always watch for. And there's just something about this that truly is everything that I've gotten to know and love about Janessa Myricks' complexion products up until now, but you know, made into a formula that is thin enough on the skin for me and dewy enough on the skin for me. And I've been wearing it with that Naturium sunscreen, but I've been wearing it with a bunch of other stuff too. This is the shade two. It's a fantastic shade match for me. It works well with all the other products that I've been liking to use lately. And it's just my kind of like go-to skin tint of choice right now. It's just the right amount of coverage. It's blurring, it's beautiful. It doesn't give me any of that funny like gray cast over my freckles if my freckles show through. And it works with everything from like a powder bronzer or something like that, all the way to like my serum bronzer and stuff. So I feel like it's just really versatile. I can wear it very selectively because it is such a good shade match and just kind of feather it around. It doesn't have to be like a full coverage situation. And I just really enjoy it. So that's just one that I feel like is kind of a sneaky new release. Like a lot of people weren't really talking about it. The only reason I knew about it is because my friend Natalie uh, does not sleep. She just monitors product releases as well as, you know, a million other things. She's spread way too thin as a human being and I care a lot about her and I hope she's okay. <laughs> She was like, you should try this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I'm glad that I did. Another complexion product that is an oldie but a goodie, but I cannot stop using it. It's what I'm wearing today. This is the most uncomplaining foundation that I own. I have a lot of Chanel foundations and I like them a lot. I've stopped using the sublimage right now because my skin is actually like, you know, not desperately horribly dry. <laughs> and so I find that with all my sunscreens and everything else, like this does get a little bit like slippier and dewier than I want it to. It's very much like my winter foundation. So that's like why we're not talking about it today. But I've swapped over to the number one day Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. This is exclusive to their website and to the Ulta. Well, well, not the Ulta website, but to Ulta. This is so good. It's so good. And Ingrid likes it too. So like Ingrid has not dry skin and she really likes it because it does leave kind of like a dewy, ish finish. It looks really natural and it's like a medium to buildable coverage level. But like, there's just something about this when I put it on, it just looks like a better version of my skin going on. It's just perfect. It's like exactly what I want out of an actual foundation. And like my face just loves it. It's kind of like the sublimage in the sense that like, even though Chanel likes to put a fragrance in everything, my skin doesn't seem particularly bothered by it for some reason. My back skin, hates it, like hates a fragrance. Don't, don't bother my body skin with a fragrance, but for whatever reason, my face skin is just like, yeah, whatever. And so this and that, they're the best for my skin day on day on day. Like when I wear a Chanel foundation day on day on day, I see my skin being happier and happier about it. I can't explain that to you, but they do claim to have some good skincare ingredients in there, just like nourishing, hydrating type things, not like actives and apparently it works for me. So this is 75 buccaroonies. Like it's not kidding around, but like I will use this until it is gone. <laughs> the same way that I have used this until it is almost gone. Chanel just for all of the things that they do lack in shade ranges and the fact that they just can't seem to release that rosy beige thing that they keep advertising. Either way, for me personally, they are so often the answer when it comes to a foundation. Just any foundation. Like they have a foundation for me, whatever my mood is. Concealer wise, she's not really new anymore. <laughs> 
kind of funny. I'm like, this is, it's like not that new. Y'all see this a lot. This is the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer. Still using the living behooties out of this. I love it so much. It's just that really great, not quite, quite full coverage, but pretty close to full coverage. Very creamy, very hydrating kind of formula. I mean, it's like exactly what I'm looking for when I like think of a concealer because I want to be able to spread it out really nicely. I want it to give me a lot of hydration on the day and not dry out my under eyes. There's just something about it where it just is flexible in its coverage and it is really agreeable to my under eyes. I can wear it like a foundation. I can build it on, I build it on top of itself as a concealer. And it comes in this gigantic thing that kind of suggests that, you know, this is 0.37 ounces for $37. So if you crunch the numbers there, that's a hundred dollars an ounce, which is a lot less expensive than a lot of the concealers pound for pound that I have in my collection and swear by all the time. So it's just one of those things that like, I keep waiting for a day where it's going to disappoint me and it just doesn't. And the other one that has been like this sneaky little hit in my routine, as soon as I used it, I was like, wait, <laughs> because they reformulated the Stay Woke Concealer from UMA. So I have this in White Pearl T1 and the main thing that got me originally hooked on this was just like how ridiculously good of a shade match that is. It's like almost disappearing into my hand, whereas you can see the Givenchy one is, you know, glowing. It's more of a brightening color on me. That's N95. It's wild. It truly just covers and then that's it. And they did send me, I bought this one, but they sent me a couple more shades and they're great too for like brightening and stuff like that. So it's like good to have them in my repertoire, but like where did it go? <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I'm just a really big fan of this formula. It's lightweight, it's creamy, it's hydrating, and it does have a good amount of coverage. Another complexion product, and I will say, I, one of y'all pointed out that there's actually not very much product for your money in this packaging, and I can't stop thinking about it, but I still love this stuff so much, especially as we're talking about great shade matches, and that is the Bosma Foundation Stick. This is still the only product that Bosma makes, and I think that they're doing just fine. This is the brand that you see that is just doing such a good job of social media of shade matching people where they will literally take the stick like this and you you'll be like they didn't do anything because it's that good of a shade match and also the formula is really good i love using this as just kind of a universal complexion product it's not necessarily a foundation or a concealer and it is a great match it's really, really good. But yeah, as far as my like routine goes, where it's like I do my foundation and my bronzer and my contour and sometimes even my blush and I just blend it all together, like this is the one. I think that this is the last complexion product and talk about me <laughs> sharing products that are not new or new to me at all. Glossier Stretch Concealer, y'all, especially summer skin. I am leaving the house with just sunscreen on in a lot of cases and my skin is just not always at its best and so this is su just such a perfect compliment to like just sunscreen on my face disappear into your skin like where did it go <laughs> It's, it's around this area, <laughs> somewhere in there. And yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the stretch concealer, it's just really skin-like and it does stretch. Like you can build it or it can just completely disappear into the skin. And it's really emollient and it's meant to just kind of be worn with nothing else on your skin. You know, you can, I mean, obviously you can wear it with anything, but I mean, you don't have to powder it or anything. It just kind of has its own presence. And it is like the ultimate no makeup, makeup, glossier vibe. I think this stuff is a revelation. So I wear the shade G. 11. Okay, next, and not in the order that you would put it on your face, but we're gonna talk about primers. I have the Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. This was actually sent to me by Ciate. They joined Shop My Shelf, I think, and then they were just like, hey, can we send you some stuff? And I was like, abs, a freaking lately. I feel like I'm a broken record at this point because I just keep swatching things that are dewy. Like, that's all I want in life right now. <laughs> it's things that are dewy that don't make my skin too slippy, and this is perfect for that because it's gonna give the whole face of makeup a little a little bit more glow, a little bit more radiance, not shimmer. Just a really nice glycerin-y finish, but it actually still behaves like a primer. It actually helps extend the wear time of my makeup. It actually has a little bit of grip to it. And I think that it's amazing. It's just like a really easy product to sleep on. Cause it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like khaki, it just looks shiny on your hand. Yeah, it's cause it does what it's supposed to do and it doesn't complain. It's just great stuff. If you are looking for something that can kind of doctor the finish of your makeup, you know, if you're having kind of dry skin days and things like that, it does really 
make your skin look like you're having a far better skincare day than you might have woken up to. I'll be brief. I use both of these right now. These are the Victoria Beckham by Augustinus Bader Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer, and I have the regular one and the gold one. And I will quote my friend Hope Miss Tom in saying, I don't know, this just does something. <laughs> So there's the clear one and then there's the golden one and I think that the golden one at least in the amount that I want to wear it It shows up enough on my skin that I like want to mix it with my foundation It's really something that like deepens a foundation for me And so that's why I you know pick between the two but worn very very surely it can just be like a, a little bit of like a bouncy glow but the main thing that this does is it hydrates and plumps your skin without leaving a lot of slip like it's really pretty, but it's not heavy and it doesn't leave like a layer on your face like a Milk Hydro Grip or something like that. Yeah, if you aren't into the golden, I would definitely recommend the just the regular one. It makes your makeup go on better, makes it last longer, and it just makes your skin look like bouncier and juicier when you put your makeup on. All right, couple of powders here. You know, I would talk about my Kosas, but I don't know where it has run off to. She done R-U-N-N-O-F-T. I don't know. I've been doing my makeup in another room, so I might have done that, but understand that I'm still using the living crap out of the Kosas <laughs> when I can locate it. I also might have gotten overzealous while cleaning and just put it back in like the powder drawer. That's something stupid that I do sometimes. But the other two that really are unsurprising, but bringing this one back out into rotation, we have the House Labs, which <laughs> I made the mistake one time of putting some of the Danessa Myricks, what is this stuff called? The liquid eyeshadow on here? And I've just never cleaned it off. And like, oh my God, <laughs> it doesn't come off. <laughs> like it just doesn't come off. That stuff is wild. But either way, the House Labs powder, it's just so brightening and beautiful and I love it. And it actually adds a little bit of coverage, which is nice because sometimes I go a little too hard on my bronzer. Also sometimes with the concealer being such a close match to my skin, I use my powder to brighten a little bit without ending up with a, like a white ring but just, you know, getting a little bit of brightening on the under eye for some dimension. This is fantastic for that. And mm -hmm, when I went back in for that Make Beauty video and just, you know, put all this stuff back on, I was reminded like how incredible this powder is. It doesn't complain. There's something about their powders. You can put them on top of anything. You can put them on top of a wet face <laughs> and they just like don't gum up. They're amazing. And so it's like this and the bronzer and the blush, like they're just great. And I'm keeping this one back out, top shelf. So yeah, this is the diffusion set and I have it in translucent fair. Speaking of bronzers, let's go ahead and move into the bronzers because yeah, we'll briefly mention the Make Beauty one. This one is in Lunar. It looks a lot darker in the pan than it does on your face. Ooh, you can actually start to see the, the pan shape in there just a little bit. So this is what I'm wearing today. It's just such a sexy bronze and it goes on so uncomplainingly. Like I said, even on top of like basically a completely dewy face of makeup, you can just put the this on with a brush and it's fine. It's just not gonna stamp. I've tested it. At least on me, I just, I can't get it to stamp. <laughs> I'm not gonna say this is like the fairest bronzer color in the world. They should probably expand the shade range. But for me, Lunar is just like that perfect, sexy summer bronze. Even if y'all watched that Make Beauty video that I just did, you put this on top of a foundation and you maintain the finish of the foundation without getting that mattified powdered look. Like that's worth my money all day long. The other one, and I have to say, like the only thing that really disappoints me about LH Cosmetics is their packaging. Like this just doesn't enamor me to interact with and they're not inexpensive products, but LH Cosmetics sent these to me. I was eager to try them. This was actually the third bronzer that I tried from them because they sent me a couple of the wrong shades initially. And I'm just so glad that we worked together to get me matched to the right color. So this is the color Always. And it is clearly, clearly a favorite of mine. I like this so much. This is a bail me out of trouble bronzer because while the one from Make is like giving me better than what nature might achieve, this brings me back to like home base on my skin tone. Not necessarily like a finishing powder, you know what I mean? It's not my actual skin tone, but it's like a bronze that is such a natural match to my undertones that if I have gone too far in one direction, like I actually did today, I put too much blush on today and it was like the wrong color, it looked really wild. And I had a little bit of complexion product left on my sponge here and I just kind of tapped it back out because like it just, it was not good. But that left me with this 
this kind of like blanked out foundation face up here. I just put that on top and it was great. And then I just sprayed the heck out of myself with Fix Plus, but it made such a huge difference in like bringing my skin back to looking like my skin tone, you know, looking like a bronze that would naturally occur because we all like to take risks in our makeup routine. We all like to just try something new. And it's so good to know what products are gonna be able to kind of rescue you when you've gone too far. And that is what this shade in this bronzer does for me. The other bronzer that I can't put down. I love these. These were love at first swipe. I put these on my cheeks and I was like, Yes, because I'm a freckles in the summertime girl. So this is the Jones Road Gel Bronzer. It's only three shades, I think. It's not great, but this is a really, really phenomenal formula and I hope that it does well and then they just expand it in all directions. I did an Instagram reel on this so you can see it really close up in action, but it's it's really the gel. The gel is the reason that I love this so much. It goes on just ugh, so beautifully on the skin and it leaves this really, really gorgeous finish. It kind of reminds me of like the Bionic bronzer from Milk Makeup. Either way, I like the delivery system better. I like the packaging better. There's something about this where when I apply it on top of like almost no makeup, like just an SPF or something, it brings my skin to life. Like it just breathes life into my complexion in a way that like nothing else does without looking like makeup. Like this just looks like really gorgeous tanned skin in the best way possible. Like Patrick taught eat your heart out. Like it's one step and it does all the work. And every time I use it, I'm glad that I did. Shocking to absolutely no one, but I have to touch on it the contour and bail me out of trouble bronzer combo of life. I'm not even sure how much longer this is going to exist. It keeps selling out in every shade everywhere and going on sale everywhere and what have you, but I'm still gonna keep using it. So this is the Natasha Denona Contour Sculpting Powder. It's just great. I hope they're just repackaging it or something because it's like really hard. Every time I mention it, it's like harder and harder for me to find it to like tag it. And mine's probably gonna expire pretty soon too. 18 months, yeah, we're probably over that at this point. So if y'all know what's up with this product, let me know. And then the other one is this which I've also had since probably, I think like 2019 or 2020, I'm not sure. But this is the Victoria Beckham Matte Bronzing Brick in one. And I use both of these quite a lot, mainly in my eye area, like as eyeshadows and to bridge any kind of like too stark gaps in the colors on my face, if that makes sense. Like this color right here is just amazing at kind of like blurring the lines of anything that's kind of like glowing contrast. And it's just such an indispensable part of my routine. The beauty of this is if I decide that this is, you know, expired for me or whatever, just replace the pan. That's the best part about it. I don't have to rebuy that component. A couple of blushes here. Talk about the powders real quick because Armani has been just crushing it lately. I mean, technically I crushed it lately when I found this at Sephora, which is just like impossible to find. I just stumbled on it. And this is shade 20 in the Neo Nude Melting Color Balm. And it's just so beautiful. It's like this really awesome kind of like powder hybrid cream finish stuff, it's fantastic. And it's actually kind of more of a bronzer for me, but I've been using the crap out of it. And I just can't stop using their Luminous Silk blushes. I want every color of this blush. I have like the new one that's like the fair, like warm beige that just came out at Sephora. It's sitting in my cart, just waiting for a friend to accompany it to my house the next time I decide to make an order. I wear these so much and this coral right here, girl, that's the one, that's the one. This is shade 30. This is the one that I just like, every single time I get done doing my makeup, I'm like, you know what I could use? Some coral. And that's why I keep using it. Oh, I didn't swatch it. I should swatch that for y'all. There it is. And then the other one that is, you know, not a powder that I've been loving, oh my gosh, is this limited edition one from Rare Beauty. They sent me the whole library of all of their soft, pinch liquid blushes. And we were just kind of stumbling through a video and I was like, I want something that's kind of like a nice muted coral, but I And I pulled this one out and I was like, wait, that's the one. This is Virtue, come on. Because Joy is that really bright coral. It's like so intense. It'll work on like any skin tone. This is because these are so pigmented. This is a lot more accommodating for me because I don't get carried away quite as quickly with it. Like that's every TikTok video of these when they first came out was all these people being like, oh my God, I had no idea that it was gonna have this much pigment to it. And so it's like, this is a easier, more nuanced shade to use. You still gotta be careful with it, but like I, 
adore virtue. This is like my home color. <laughs> it's like you took the beige that I love and the coral that I love and you just put them together in one blush. It's especially good on like a no makeup makeup kind of face of makeup. Speaking of rare beauty, it's such a crime. It's really such a crime how the packaging was just so screwed up on these because I have really fallen in love with her highlighters. Not as a highlighter on my face, but as like this like perfect inner corner highlight. Lately I've been really into, especially as I'm not brightening my eyes with concealer. I'm really into like selective brightening with highlighters and Enlighten I would say is my like main shade and it is shot. I have repressed them and I probably will just repress this but I haven't gotten around to it yet and I really need to because yeah the, the domed packaging like they just shatter and all of mine are broken. I love those and it's like heartbreaking that like I don't even want to tell anybody to buy them because the packaging is just so flawed. God look at that color story. I like don't want to wipe it off because it's so perfect. <laughs> Let's talk eyes real quick because there's really not that much. There are two things here. I can talk all the game I want about how much these aren't a lot of product for your money, the Make Beauty Eye Stylos, but they're really, really good and I can't stop using them, so there's that. And I haven't really picked particular shades. I don't think you can really go wrong. The thing with me is, you know, if I find one that's brown and I find one that's kind of pale beige, those are the ones that I'm going to use, you know? Like if it's one that's cool tone, one's kind of a warm tone, what have you. Like I'm going to figure it out, but like I don't really have favorites because they sent me the whole line. Like just pick what you like kind of thing. But I just really like them. They're a very, very good formula, okay? Like they work really beautifully and I use them now interchangeably with my Victoria Beckham eyewear, which these are my big three. This is pecan, trench, and oyster. Like this is every eye look for me, basically. This is another really great inner corner highlight. And then I go in with whatever, you know, a shimmer of some persuasion. It's just like my grounding routine so that I don't feel like I just panic when it's time to do my eye look, you know, where I'm just like, oh, where do I have to go pet? Tell you what, I haven't touched a palette in a long time. I have not touched a palette in a long time because this is going to get the job done faster, be what I'm trying to do without asking for a palette to have basics in it, you know? And then I can just concentrate on what I want to do. The fun part, because I've done all the contour and shadow and light and all that stuff with something that I know is not going to crease and not going to fade, and not going to do weird crap. I would say that, you know, if you're only in it for the $22 buy-in, you're not getting as much for your money, but they're still really good. And then if you want to go for the buy-in, like absolutely these, I would say that Oyster, if you have something highlighty and you know what I mean, you don't need to worry about something like this creasing. It's just a good thing for me to have. I like using it and it's a unique shade, but Trench and Pecan, for fair-skinned people. But it goes fairly deep, not wildly deep, but neither of them does. I think that they both could use like something closer to black to give that like really great depth that like a deep skin tone would need in the Victoria Beckham eyewear. And then Oyster is just, it's a unique color because it does have a touch of green to it. They're just a really good combo. I really like what she did with them and I truly reach for them constantly. And like I said, I have been doing that routine and then going in with some kind of shimmer on my lid. And you're probably pretty familiar with most of them. Actually, the one you might not be familiar with is this one from Bodyography. This was sent to me in like a big box from Shop My Shelf. And it was my first experience using anything from Bodyography. And this is just the shade Celestial in their glitter pigment. Fantastic. It's what I have on my lids right now. I like it very much. It just, it kind of reminds me of a really good highlighter, you know? Oh, it's so silky. I don't know how they do it, but the quality of the formula when you touch it, oh. Yes, if you like a good consistent highlight shimmer, like that's so gorgeous and it's kind of peach, I'm super into that. Then we have, surprising to absolutely no one because I can't shut up about it, the one that you can't buy. If you can find it somewhere, let me know, but I think it's being discontinued and that is the YSL Sequin Crush Mono Shadow in 06. So this is called Confident Nude, inexplicably, because that's not a nude for anyone. That's like, you know, bright peach, but it's got a really great amount of kind of erratic glitter in it. That's gonna be a really good topper for when, you know, I, I do, I kind of want that little bit of like a lived in vibe. And then I did get a whole palette of pops, didn't I? I got that NARS, what is it? It's the Laguna Sunset Quad Eyeshadow. This is, you know, one of their two summer quads that they put out. And I bought this when I was in DC. I was at uh, Blue Mercury and I swatched it and I was like, yep, I love it. I love it. And it's just really great because you have four shadows that are all you know, in a shimmery family, the 
three other than the brown are going to be even more kind of like spangly and they're more of like I don't say toppers but like main characters and then that brown <laughs> oh that brown is like my perfect bedroomized brown shade so yeah those are just they really are they're like a perfect kind of color palette for summertime for me I just want that like warm rich sun-kissed color palette and those are the ones. I'm still using the crap out of the Hindash color fluids. I'm using canvas as a base a lot of the time and I'm always, always, always using Thorn as my eyeliner, as my liquid eyeliner. Like it's just the one, it's just the one. And I'm using my Thrive Cosmetics mascara, my liquid lash extensions. I need to get a new brown. I've been using the black for a while but I need to get a new brown. Okay, and last but not least, we have lip products. And like looking in this box right now, <laughs> I get like the joy sparking feeling. Like I don't know what it is about lip products in general but especially when I find the ones that are just like my comfort lip products. They just make me feel so good, so. It's not a, a secret at all that I've been in love with Bikini from Victoria Beckham and the Posh Gloss for like, what, years now? Whenever whenever it came out, I just, it was love at first sight. I bought it and I was like, yes, absolutely. It is my ride or die favorite lip gloss of life. But it took me a minute to really fall for Picante. And that's because I think I was assuming it was gonna be a little clearer than it is. It's quite an opaque sort of peachy, pale coral but once I got used to it it's kind of my favorite thing now and every time I wear it people are like what is that you just have to like make sure you get you know the same way you would with any colored lip product you have to like cover your whole lip with it whereas I don't have to be quite as careful with something like this because it's basically the color of my lips when I'm putting it on every single time I have this moment of like is this gonna work is that gonna turn out cute <laughs> Like Kelly says to me about my blush. But like, yeah, it always turns out cute. And it always goes with like the coral beige thing that I wanna put on my cheeks all the time, just the mood that I'm in for summer. And I've been really, really in love with it. And when I was in DC last time and I saw Ingrid while I was there, she was like, putting it on. She was like, you inspired me. I bought it too. And it looked amazing on her too. So that made me really happy. Okay, next. And this is actually what I'm wearing right now. And that is the YSL. Gosh, y'all. This is just a stupid little clear lip thing, but it's, um, the formula is incredible. This is the new Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze. And like, I like their Rouge Volupte lipsticks. I think they're really pretty, but they're not particularly tenacious. This has been over an hour of filming that I've been wearing this and it's just fantastically tenacious. It really gives you this like super juicy, glossy lip, no white ring of death, and it lasts for so long. I wanna get all the colors in it. I just can't stop putting it on. It has a really, really like light kind of fruity fragrance to it, which doesn't bug me. And you don't smell it once you put it on. And it's super freaking nourishing. I'm just a huge fan of this. And I mean, obviously like put anything in that container, right? Like that, <laughs> package is just so pretty. I do, I want more of these. They're so awesome. I wanna see all the colors, but like this clear, I can't stop putting it on. And y'all know how I feel about a clear lip balm. Like I'll use one I don't even like. <laughs> I'm always putting one on, but this has been the only one that I want to go for lately. Okay, now we have some colors and I'm gonna actually swatch the, swatch the colors against this color. The first one being this Armani, the Lip Power lipstick in the shade 102. Oh my God. It was love at first swatch when I was in Sephora. Y'all know it's either coral or it's beige for me. Like that's the way that it is. And this is the perfect beige lip color. I mean, I put it on walking down the street and Steph and Natalie both turned to me and they're like, yes, <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, I love this formula. I love this color. I love this, there's something about this delivery system that just feels really like cool and modern, but timeless at the same time. I really like the shape of the bullet. Also, it's the red and the black for me. There's just something about about it that it gives me like old luxury and I love the color. Then we have NARS Breathless. This is a really unique color and I have gotten used to the formula. At first I was like, this formula is like too kind of thin and it moves around too much. But as I wore it, it's just this beautiful kind of like burnt peach color that just, oh, it was like worth it for me to get used to the formula because it gave me the feeling that it was not going to be as tenacious as it is, but it sticks around just fine. It just kind of takes a minute for like the moisture of it to like soak into my lips, you know? But the color, is so exquisite and so uncommon and it's really like right there in between a peach and a nude. It's so beautiful and it's just so unique and I'm really glad that I got it and also look at the component. Look at it. Look at it. It's gorgeous. 
It's just gorgeous. And then, this one is just a total shock. I ended up trying this back out for a video. I pulled it out for some reason, and then I needed a lipstick to experiment for some YouTube shorts. You know, it was like you needed a lipstick to try this certain hack or whatever. And I pulled this back out and I was like, I forgot how freaking great of a color this is. So this is Cinnamon Red. It's not red at all, but the shade is cinnamon red in the matte silk lipstick from La Perla. First of all, I, this sparks joy. The packaging just sparks joy. Everything about it, the gold, the red, it's just lovely. But then, is this replaceable? Yes, and it's replaceable, so you don't have to rebuy this expensive component. I bought two of these. I have the other one called Espresso Lips, and it is also gorgeous, and it is like more of a sheer color. But this is just so worth mentioning because it's so uncommon for me that I'm like really into a lipstick, like a true pigmented bullet lipstick that doesn't have some kind of like sheer quality to it. Look at this color, look at it. Oh, talk about like beautiful burnt peach. I wore this to my facial last week and my esthetician who also had on like a coral lip color, she was like, what is it? What is on your lips? And then she stopped and like wrote it down. It is again, the La Perla Matte Silk Lipstick in Cinnamon Red. And it is just off the charts in terms of being that perfect kind of coral color. And because it does have so much color to it, you can blot it and just like top it with a lip gloss too. But also they do make the sheer kind of lip balm version of it. And that it's almost the same color and it's called Espresso Lips. And I love that one too. Did you see what I mean where it's such a different color than my lips that like at first you're like <gasps> <laughs> But you once you get full coverage on it, oh, it just takes me away. Look at that. <sighs> I mean, I did not know that I was going to be such a peach girly, you know? That I was not going to be afraid of something that leaned a touch orange, you know? It doesn't go too orange, but it's also not trying to be a nude. I think that it's when there's a nude that I put on that I'm wanting to be this and it goes orange, that it freaks me out. But this, because it's so decisive about what it wanted to be, it's like, we're going to be this really great kind of like burnt peach color. It does exactly what it sets out to do and it looks so modern. It's like the statement lip for me. I just love it. And the formula is great. It is great, La Perla. It just grips right onto your lips. It looks really like juicy still. It looks really creamy. Even though they say that it's a silk matte, like on what planet? It's still so creamy looking. You know I'm not a matte lip girl. I'm not a matte anything girl, really. No, that's not matte. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's so easy to reapply. It's so easy to wear. It's really long wearing. I love it and it goes with everything without like overwhelming my look, right? A lot of times when I wear an intensely pigmented color that is, you know, very opaque like this, it just like blanks everything else out on my face. It's like, who cares how much time I put into my eye look or whatever. Like all you see is my lips, like not with this. It's perfect. It's perfect, okay? And it's staying out top shelf. I'm really loving this kind of like grouping them together so that I can see all the swatches of the colors that I'm into all at once because we are really in a very specific mood for summer, aren't we? Like all of these little color stories that have been on my wrist have really told me exactly where I'm at right now. So that's top shelf. I mean, I could probably pull out espresso lips as well. It's probably like floating around in a bag, but I'm very much like getting more comfortable with wearing lipstick and stuff now that I've stumbled on what I think are the more nuanced colors, like it's what luxury beauty does really well, are like nuanced lipsticks. They just, that's where they tend to kind of like place their flag is they're just like, we're lipstick brands. <laughs> and I've just always been like, eh, that doesn't really reach me. I'm not a super lipstick person, but it's like, I'm becoming a lipstick person because I am finding brands that do it so well. And this, whew, mm, sold, sold all day long. So yeah, y'all. That's my top shelf right now. Does that mean that there are things that I love and use all the time that I didn't mention? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not just gonna hammer home every single step in my routine in every single one of these videos. They would be like two hours long. So these are like the standouts, right? If you could see me, the things that I edited out was like I did have everything in my routine and I like picked them out between takes because it's like I don't really wanna talk about that because it's like you've heard about it so many times. So these are like the main characters and there are still quite a lot. So I will list all the products down below. I hope that y'all found this valuable. I 
personally love watching these kinds of videos from other creators. I want to know what you're using. You know what I mean? What you're excited about. I don't care when it came out. So I hope that y'all like this. If you did, give it a thumbs up, please. And subscribe if you want to. It would be really, really cool if you did. I'd love it if you stuck around. And I will put a video. Actually, I'm going to put my, my playlist up here of all of my other top shelf videos for y'all to check out if you feel so inclined. I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.